Beef Jeremiah Obafemi Awolowo was a Nigerian nationalist, political leader, writer and a principal participant in the country's struggle for independence. Obafemi Awolowo, commonly known as Awo and often referred to as the Sage, was one of modern Nigeria's founding fathers. Awolowo was born in the town of Akene, Western State, present-day Ogun State, on March 6, 1909. His first name, Obafemi, means the king loves me, and his surname means the mystic, or mysticism, commands honor or respect. His father was a farmer and sawyer who died when Obafemi was only seven years old. He received his early education at the mission schools of Ikene and Abadan and became a teacher in Abbe Akuta, later qualifying as a shorthand typist. He subsequently served as a clerk at the famous Wesley College in Abadan and is a correspondent for the Nigerian Times. Despite his interest in business ventures, Awolowo wanted to continue his formal education. In 1944 he completed a correspondence course for a Bachelor of Commerce degree in a University of London. His greatest ambition, however, was to study law, which he did in London from 1944 to 1946, after which he was called to the bar. Returning to Nigeria in 1947, he developed a thriving practice as a barrister in Abadan. He married Hannah Adou Didaholu in 1937. They had two sons and three daughters. Awolowo's organizational and political inclinations can be traced to his involvement in various unions, including the Nigerian Motor Transport Union, the Nigerian Produce Traders Association and the Trades Union Congress of Nigeria. He organized most of these trade unions in his spare time while continuing to run his law firm. He was appointed Secretary of the Nigerian Motor Transport Union and Western Provincial Secretary of the Nigerian Youth Movement. By the early 1940s, he was active in the NYM, becoming the organization's Abadan Branch's Secretary in 1940. In 1942, he led a bout of civil disobedience that resulted in the reform of the Abadan Native Authority Advisory Board. In 1944, he organized a mass protest against the ban on exporting palm kernel. It was this grassroots-level activism that did much to convince ordinary people that they could take on the British and win. Awolowo believed that the colonial system could be challenged in Africa as it had been in India. During his stay in London, Awolowo moved to a position of prominence in the struggle for Nigerian independence. He founded the Action Group political party in 1951 and became its first president. The Action Group's platform called for the immediate termination of British rule in Nigeria and for the development of various public welfare programs including universal primary education, an increase of health services in rural areas, the diversification of the Western regional economy and the democratization of local governments. He won the first Western region elections in 1951 and was chosen to be Minister for Local Government Structure, a role in which he established elective councils. In 1954 he became the first Premier of the Western Region, an achievement for which he was awarded an honorary chieftaincy. During his tenure as leader and Premier, he held the regional ministerial portfolios of local government, finance and economic planning. He was also the Chairman of the Regional Economic Planning Commission. From 1954 to 1959 as Premier of the Western Region, Awolowo worked to improve education, social services and agricultural practices. He also tried to build the Action Group into an effective nationwide party by making alliances with ethnic groups in other regions. However, the 1959 elections were to be an important turning point in Awolowo's career. After his resignation from the post of Premier to run for a seat in the Federal House of Representatives, the Action Group was decisively defeated and Awolowo found himself the leader of the opposition in the Federal House of Representatives while the deputy leader of the Action Group, Chief Akintola, remained Premier of the Western Region. In 1963 Awolowo was found guilty of conspiring to overthrow the government of Nigeria and was sentenced to 10 years of imprisonment. However, in 1966, a coup d'etat led to the suspension of Nigeria's federal constitution and the empowerment of a military government. The coup led to Awolowo's release in July 1966 and as a result of the confused events of the next year and after some indecision, he eventually threw his support behind the federal government against the southeastern secessionist state of Biafra. He was appointed the Federal Commissioner of Finance and Vice President of the Federal Executive Council by Yukubu Gowin's military administration during the Civil War. In the mid-1970s he was the Chancellor of the University of Ife, now Obafemi Awolowo University, which was the brainchild of the Action Group. He was also a senior advocate of Nigeria. When the 12-year ban on political activity was lifted in 1978 in preparation for a return to civilian rule, Awolowo emerged as the leader of the Unity Party of Nigeria, UPN. 
He ran for president in the elections of 1979 and 1983 but was defeated both times by Shehu Shigari. As a result of another military coup at the end of 1983, political parties were once again banned and Chief Awoloo retired from politics. Obafemi Awoloo introduced free healthcare for children up to the age of 18 in the Western region as well as free and mandatory primary education in Western Nigeria. Although Awoloo failed to win the 1979 and 1983 presidential elections, his policies of free healthcare and education were rolled out in all of the states controlled by his party, UPN. In 1945, Chief Obafemi Awoloo wrote his first book, Path to Nigerian Freedom in which he was highly critical of the British policy of indirect administration and called for rapid moves towards self-government and the Africanization of administrative posts in Nigeria. He also expressed his belief that federalism was the form of government best suited to the diverse populations of Nigeria in the book. He also founded the Trade Unions Congress of Nigeria. In 1945 in London, he helped found the Egbe Hormor Adudwa, Society of the Descendants of Adudwa, the mythical ancestor of the Yoruba, an organization devoted to the study and preservation of Yoruba culture. In 1949, Awoloo founded the Nigerian Tribune, the oldest surviving private Nigerian newspaper, which he used to spread nationalist consciousness among his fellow citizens. His second book, Awo, an autobiography of Chief Obafemi Awoloo, in which he once more endorsed federalism as the most appropriate form of government for Nigeria, was published in 1960. In it, he also outlined the successful history of the Action Group and was optimistic with regards to Nigerian independence. While in prison, Awoloo wrote Thoughts on the Nigerian Constitution, 1966, in which he argued for the retention of a federal form of government composed of 18 states. In 1968, Awoloo published his fourth book, The People's Republic, calling for federalism, democracy and socialism as necessary elements for a new constitution which would lead to the development of a stable and prosperous Nigeria. Although he praised the military government for creating a 12-state federal system in 1967, he predicted further political difficulties because these states had not been based on ethnic and linguistic affinities. Awoloo continued to serve the government as Commissioner of Finance and Vice Chairman of the Federal Executive Council throughout the Civil War years, 1967 to 1970. In his 1970 book The Strategy and Tactics of the People's Republic of Nigeria, he hinted at a position which he would state more firmly in subsequent years, that the government's post-war spending should be devoted to development rather than to the military. Awoloo's other publications include Anglo-Nigerian Military Pact Agreement, Philosophy of Independent Nigeria, Blueprint for Post-War Reconstruction, The Path to Economic Freedom in Developing Countries, Problems of Africa, Awo on the Nigeria Civil War, Adventures in Power, and selected speeches such as Voice of Reason, Voice of Courage, and Voice of Wisdom. Awoloo is remembered for his remarkable integrity, ardent nationalism, principled opposition and federalistic convictions. His party was the first to move the motion for Nigeria's independence in the federal parliament and he obtained internal self-government for the western region in 1957. He is credited with coining the name Naira for the Nigerian Standard Monetary Unit, formerly known as the Nigerian Pound, as the federal commissioner of finance under the military government of General Yukubu Gowin. And though often ignored, Obafemi Awoloo was also General Yukubu Gowin's de facto vice president when he was vice president of the Supreme Federal Executive Council under Gowin. Awoloo helped to finance the civil war and preserve the federation without borrowing. He built the Liberty Stadium in Abaden, the first of its kind in Africa with a seating capacity of 35,000, which was later renamed after him by President Jonathan Abele good luck 30 years after his death established Western Nigerian Television, WNTV, the first television station in Africa, on October 1, 1959, erected the Coco House, the first skyscraper in tropical Africa, which is still the tallest building in Abaden, and ran a widely respected civil service authority in the Western region. He held many chieftaincy titles including the Lossi of Ikene, Lisa of Ajayan, Asawaju of Remo, Adofan of Owo, Ajagunla of Adu Akiti, Apaisan of Asogbo, Adol of Ife and Obongikpa Isong of Abibioland. He was also awarded the highest Nigerian national honor, Grand Commander of the Federal Republic. Many institutions in Nigeria have honored him and some regional and national institutions and roads are named after him. His portrait is also on the 100 Naira note. Awoloo died at his Ikene home, the Efaniela Hall, named after his mother, on May 9, 1987 at the age of 78. Thank you for watching. Like, comment and subscribe for more videos like this. 
See you in the next video.